Hi everyone! I know that you're done learning the seismic waves. Again, because it was actually taught in you when you were in grade 8. Remember that seismic waves are energy waves released during an earthquake. The first type of seismic waves, which are the body waves, will be dealt with in the next part of the video. What are those two body waves? Those are the primary waves and the secondary waves. Remember that these two waves travel at different velocities. Thus, they do not arrive at a seismic recording station at the same time. The farther the recording instrument is from the focus, the greater the difference in arrival times of the first P wave compared to the first S wave detected by the seismic station. The difference in the arrival time will also tell us the distance of the earthquake's focus from the seismic recording station. However, it does not tell in which direction it came from. So, this activity number two, which is entitled Find the Center, what you are actually going to find is the epicenter of an earthquake. It is only if we have at least three recording stations or three record three seismic recording stations that can tell how far away from them the earthquake occurred. The epicenter can also be determined using the triangulation method. And this is the method usually used by scientists in determining again the epicenter. It uses distance information from three seismic stations to locate the earthquake epicenter. You will be given with a map later on for you to proceed with your activity. In this case, the learning objective for this activity is for you to be able to locate the epicenter of an earthquake using the triangulation method. So follow all the steps after this slide. For you to be able to locate the epicenter of an earthquake, Using the triangulation method, these are the materials you are going to use to perform this activity. Number one, the Philippine map. Number two, the drawing compass, usually used in your mathematics classes in drawing a circle. Be careful whenever using this because this has a pointed end. Number three, ruler for measuring short distances. And lastly, the data sheet. This data sheet contains the time difference in the arrival of the P and S waves coming from three seismic stations. This will be the hypothetical situation for this activity. The Philippines was struck by an earthquake. Three pillbox stations had recorded the time difference in the arrival time of primary and secondary waves, or the P waves and the S waves respectively. The three seismic stations are from Angeles City, Cebu City, and Zamboanga City. They were able to record the time difference in the arrival time of P wave and S wave. In Angeles City, it was recorded that the S wave arrived after 32 seconds from the arrival of the P wave. In Cebu City, S waves arrived 24.53 seconds after the P waves. In Zamboanga City, it was 55.47 seconds after the arrival of the P wave. In determining the distance of the epicenter from a seismic station, the following formula is to be used. Distance D equals Time difference TD divided by 8 seconds times 100 kilometers. Why 8 seconds and 100 kilometers? It was found out that 8 seconds is the usual time interval between the arrival of P wave and S wave at a distance of 100 kilometers. Again, in determining the distance of the epicenter from the seismic station, we use D equals PD 
or the time difference divided by 8 seconds times 100 kilometers. So to begin with Angeles City, using the same formula, we have B equals the time difference is 32 seconds divided by 8 seconds times 100 kilometers. If you're going to notice, the unit S and S or the seconds will be cancelled out, thereby leaving with the correct unit of kilometers. In solving this, you may use your calculators or you may manually solve it using your scratch paper. Therefore, if you have solved this correctly, 32 divided by 8 will be 4 times 100 kilometers and it will give you a distance of 400 kilometers. Therefore, what does this mean? The 400 kilometers distance is telling us that the possible earthquake epicenter is located around 400 kilometers from Angeles City. I'll be leaving the rest of the calculations for Cebu City and Sambuanga City on you. But I'll be showing you the data already later on. So what did you get for Cebu City? It's 306.627 kilometers. How about for Zambuanga City? It's 693.3 kilometers. I hope every answer you got it correct. On our map, for us to locate the epicenter of an earthquake based on the distances that you have just measured previously, we are going to use a computed distance formula. From the map that we are to use later on, it can be seen this scale. Remember that for every 200 kilometers of this measure on the map, it is equivalent to around 1.5 centimeters of measurement of our ruler. So that we can convert your big distances in relation to the map that we are to use. So with this formula, computed distance equals the distance you have measured a while ago multiplied with our conversion factor of 1.5 centimeters for every 200 kilometers. So with this, we are going to use this later on for us to be able again to locate the possible location of the earthquake epicenter. So let's compute again, but now for the computed distance. Again, computed distance is equal to distance times the conversion factor of 1.5 centimeters for every 200 kilometers on our map. So for Angeles City again, we start with Angeles City, the computed distance will be as follows. Our distance that we have computed is 400 kilometers times 1.5 centimeters for every 200 kilometers. In this case, the unit kilometers will be cancelled out. Therefore, the remaining unit will be centimeters. And that will be enough for our map. So in this case, 400 times 1.5 is 600 centimeters divided by 200 thus leaving with us an answer of 3 centimeters so 3.0 will do what does 3 centimeters mean this will be the measure of your distance from Angeles City to the possible location of our epicenter around it. And again, I'll be leaving the rest of the calculations on you 
but we will check your answers in a short while. Alright, have you found out the computed distance for Cebu City and for Sambuanga City? For Cebu City, the computed distance is 2.3 centimeters. How about for Zamboanga City? What is the computed distance? The computed distance for Zamboanga City is 5.2 centimeters. I hope you got it all correct because these computed distances will be the one to be used in locating the earthquake at the center using the triangulation method. To begin locating our earthquake epicenter from the data given to us by the three seismic stations, we are now to use our drawing compass and of course your ruler. You must also be able to locate the three seismic stations on our map. Number one, Angeles City. Angeles City is in Pampanga, so this is where it is on the map. The next location of the seismic city is in Cebu City. It's here in Cebu City. And last, the seismic station is in Zamboanga City, so this will be our Zamboanga seismic station. Angeles City is 400 kilometers away from the earthquake epicenter. But on the map that we are going to use, it is only a measure of 3 centimeters using our ruler and your compass. So we set your compass around 3 centimeters in length. So if you're going to measure the opening of your compass, it must be equivalent to 3 centimeters. So if this is the measurement of our drawing compass and it's already equivalent to 3 centimeters, what you're going to do is to place the pin or the pointed end, the sharp end of your drawing compass in Angeles City. So this is the Angeles City. Then you start drawing a big circle or simply draw a circle using the compass you have. So this way. So be careful in drawing your circle. Okay, complete it. There you go. So one more. I hope it's everything clear on the video. Alright. So that circle that you have drawn from Angeles City is telling us that around that circle from Angeles City is the possible location of the earthquake epicenter felt and recorded by the seismic station present there. For Cebu City, the distance of the epicenter is 306.7 kilometers but on our map it is only around 2.3 centimeters so setting the drawing compass the opening of the drawing compass should be around 2.3 centimeters if that is already all right then we do the same thing so we place the pointed end in cebu city then Let's draw the circle. Oops. So there you go. All right, that will be good. What have you already noticed after drawing the two circles? 
Is there already an intersection of the two circles? If there is, how many intersections are present? The intersection of the circles will possibly tell you that it is the location of your epicenter of the earthquake. But let us continue with the third seismic station. The last seismic station that we have is Zamboanga City and it is 693.3 kilometers away from the possible location of the earthquake epicenter. On our map, it is 5.2 centimeters, so we set our drawing compass into 5.2 centimeters. Then, we place it in Zamboanga City, then let's have it redrawn. Let's have it drawn again. So, there you go. Just continue drawing the circle. Continue drawing the circle. There you go. So, I have already the complete circle. And there you go. Your triangulation method is already done. Where is the epicenter of our hypothetical earthquake? How will you know? Look on the map where those three circles have intersected at exactly one point. If you have already found it, then that is where the hypothetical earthquake epicenter recorded by the three seismic stations from Angel City, Cebu City, and Zamboanga City. The next question that you need to answer is, what difficulty will you encounter if you only have data from two recording stations, just like what I have asked from you a while ago when we were done drawing the Angel City and the Cebu City so far? What difficulty could you encounter in determining your earthquake epicenter? So for your activity to be performed on your own, you will still use the triangulation method that you have just watched, but the data will come from three different seismic stations. That will be one from Batangas, second will be from Puerto Princesa, and the last will be from Davao. So, take note of the data that will be given to you and the time differences in the arrival time of the P wave and the S wave and determine the hypothetical earthquake epicenter of these three seismic stations and be able to have it ready and answer on our synchronous discussion. Again, if you have questions, feel free to send me a personal message via Messenger or comment in the posting in our Google Classroom. Giving credits to the original slides used in this video presentation to Mr. Mark P. Armenta from Science and Technology Department of the Santa Maria National High School in Santa Maria, Bulacan. Thank you and enjoy! Dear Britain learners.